we present The Toff on the Farm, a radio serial in six parts, dramatised by Roy Lomax, from the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Part 6, The Mystery of Selby Farm. Right, Sergeant. How do things stand at the moment? No change, sir. Still no answer from the Toff's flat. You rang again? Five minutes ago, sir. And you tried Mr. Morn? Same thing there. No one answering. Hey, well. Have you heard any more from the Brighton police? Inspector Bishop cleared his men from the area over an hour ago. Good. And you're sure the Toff and Mr. Morn are at this Selby farm? That's what I was told on the telephone, Sergeant. That's where it's all going to happen. Won't they be in danger now Bishop's withdrawn his men? I uh, hope not. But it's possible, sir. Uh, look, Sergeant, I've been working on this job for weeks and getting nowhere. Now at last we get a break, I've got to take the chance. But we are going down there. We are, Sergeant. We've got to be careful. Move in too soon and we might blow it. Too late and, well, we could lose the whole game. And uh, what about the top, sir? I... Pity we can't contact him. I don't know about that. What do you mean, sir? Well, you know, it's just possible he'll blunder on in his own way and maybe force the pace without knowing it. And if anyone can play it by ear, he can. It's a bit risky, sir. Aye. Uh, for the top, I mean. I know what you mean. But I said we've got to take the chance, haven't we, Sergeant? There you are, gentlemen. Take a good look at it. The cause of all the trouble. The mystery of Selby Farm, sir. Right, Jolly. And we might have missed it, but for you, Bert. Don't mention it, Mr. Oh, oh, I'm still impressed. <laughs> you know, I <clears throat> think I fancy a breath of fresh air. I should be grateful, sir. The odour in here is rather <clears throat> overpowering after a time. <laughs> exactly, Jolly. Though no doubt Mr. Smith grew accustomed to it. Ah, yes, that's ah, better. Indeed it is, sir. Uh, Mr. Arp, have you got any idea what's in that safe? No, but it must be something very important, very valuable. It's already cost three lives and a kidnapping. Now, someone's very anxious to lay their hands on it. Yeah, I can see that, but... Uh... Uh, well, what is it? Uh, well, I mean, if that's the case, why are they messing about? What do you mean? Oh, you know, villains, Mr. Arp. They're after something and know what it is. They go straight in and get it, don't they? No sweat. Yes, it is uncharacteristic, isn't it? To go through this rigmarole of wanting to buy the farm. Unless... Of course, they didn't know where the safe was hidden. Yeah, it would have taken a bit of finding. Yeah, it could have taken days, weeks. They'd practically have to pull the place apart. I mean, we were lucky. Bert spotted the flagstone. That was experience, Mr. Oh, that's what I mean. But it could be the answer. They had to buy the farm to give themselves time. And what of Mr. Smith, sir? It's a good question, Johnny. They've already killed three people. Strange he's remained unharmed. Yes. Someone was obviously concerned that nothing happened to him. It's all a bit of a teaser, isn't it, Mr. Oh? It is, Bert. Uh, what are you going to do? Well, I think it's a police job from here on. Superintendent Grice. Oh, he'll never let me forget it, will he? <laughs> the Toff calls in the police. <laughs> well, What's the routine, Mr. O? Well, I'll go over to Miss Selby's cottage. There should be one or two policemen over there. Well, I didn't see anyone I'd come past. No, neither did we. But there was a murder there yesterday evening. They must have left someone on duty. Anyway, I'll go over and let them know what we found. I could give Bill Grice a ring at the same time. But won't Miss Selby and Mr. Morn be there? It's a possibility. But they may have gone back to the village. Um, would you go and see if they're around, Bert? Oh, I'd like the village a couple of miles up the road. Yes, one little Dunstead. You're right, Mr. O. Oh, and uh, if you can get a sandwich and something for us to drink, um, try the wheat, Chief. Well, the pub won't be open yet, Mr. O. No, but I met the landlord yesterday. He struck me as being a reasonable sort of fellow. Oh, if I see Miss Selby and Mr. Moore, do you want me to tell them anything? Uh, no, I think not. Let's just get the police in and tidy it all up first. Yeah. All oh, right, Mr. O. See you later. Yeah, thanks, Bert. Now, what would you like me to do, sir? Well, the safe won't run away, but we'd better not leave it unattended. I understand, sir. You can leave it to me. Fine. Oh, sir, the report we had on Mr. Brandt. You didn't see it. No. No, we slipped up on him, didn't we? It would seem so. Well, let's have a look, Jolly. You are, as I said, sir, a known criminal in the States, murder suspect, a very dangerous man. Yes, all very unpleasant. Um, ah, you see? Known to carry a knife. Ties up at the murders, isn't it? Yes, sir. So many miscalculations in this case, Johnny. Unfortunately, sir. Thank God we've found the safe. At least we've scored one hit. Yes, sir. Well, I'll go on over to the cottage. Let the police know what's been happening. You know, Monty, we shouldn't have come back to the cottage. Why not? Oh, I don't know. But after what happened... The police wouldn't have left if they weren't satisfied. Well, I still think we should have gone to the village. Look, Gillian, this is your home. You've a perfect right to be here. Mm. 
Well, I suppose it's handier for the farm. No, that's another thing. I'm not going to sit around here until six o'clock waiting mm. for Smith to grant us an audience. Damn it, he's your tenant. But he said he wanted us I to... I don't wa- care what he said. If you'd let me do it my way, we'd be inside the farm by now. I'd have had Smith out of the place quick enough. But well, that's what he... you want, isn't it? Why you came down here? Well, yes. Well, then. Look, I'm sorry, Gillian, and I'm just not going to wait any longer. I'm going over there oh, now. Please. He'll either listen to reason or I'll use this to persuade him. What? No, it's all right. I don't intend to use it. Just frightened. Where did you get it? An old service revolver belonged to my brother. Oh, I wish Richard was here. We should never have asked him to drop the case. He wasn't helping you, Gillian. In fact, I've been very disappointed with him all along. When you consider his reputation, I mean, look at the way he trusts that American chap, Brandt. So do I, Monty. Well, I think you're wrong. Why? I've been worried about Brandt right from the start. Let's face it, no one knows anything about him, what he's doing here. He came to buy the farm. That's what I mean. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if he was behind Alan's kidnapping. Oh, no, Monty. He's involved in this business somehow. I know he is. Anyway, that'll keep for now. I'm going over to see Smith. Yeah. Who's that, Monty? Well, I don't know. You're not expecting anyone? No. Well, do you think it's the police? Yeah, it could be, I suppose. Come back to check something. Mm. No, you stay here. I'll see who it is. Richard. Ah, oh, good morning, Monty. What the hell are you doing here? I'm pleased to see you, too. You know you're not welcome. No, I'm sorry. We've already told you. We want you to stay out of our affairs. Oh, who is it? Oh, Richard. Hello, Gillian. Well, what are you doing here? I just happened to be in the area, you know. I wanted to ask a small favour, actually. Oh, well, come in, uh, Thanks, Gillian. Excuse me, Monty. Well, I'll be outside. I want to have uh, a bit of a scout ride. You're not going over to the... Well, you know what I mean. Not while he's here. Oh. I won't be long, Gillian. Monty's leg playing him up again? Oh, I don't think so, but he is a bit on edge. Yes, I can see. You know, I'm rather surprised to find you here. Why? Oh, no reason, really. Just surprised. Any police around? No. Strange. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, you wanted to ask a favour? Yes, I wondered if I could use your telephone. Oh, yes, of course. Thanks. Uh, can I ask, is it anything to do with the farm? Yes, Jenny. Well, there's nothing wrong, is there? I was over there only a few hours ago to see Mr Smith. Uh, yes, I know. How? Will you two get off my property? What? Come back at six o'clock. It was you we spoke to? Yes, I'm sorry about the deception, but it was necessary. But what about Mr Smith? Well, I managed to uh, persuade him to leave. He's oh. out of the farm. Uh, Gillian, I'd like a word uh, in private. Oh, not now, Monty. Marvellous news. Richard's just told me Smith's out of the farm. I don't believe it. No, it's true. Richard did it. Persuaded him to go. Isn't that marvellous? Now we can go ahead. When was this, Richard? A few hours ago. And you've been inside the farm since he left? Uh, that's right, Monty. And uh, now I'd like to use the phone, if I oh, may. Oh, please. Uh, go ahead, Richard. Thanks. Gillian, hmm? j- just a minute. Oh, ju- yes, Monty. Yes. What is it, Richard? I don't know. There's no dialing, Jan. Well, it was all right half an hour ago. I rang to check the time. Well, there's nothing now. It's quite dead. Strange. Um, Monty, hmm? you must tell Richard. Now, what is it, Monty? Well, when I was outside just now, I thought I saw someone or something hiding in that clump of trees by the lake. Well, did you go and check? I didn't like to go too far from the cottage. I can't, I can't be absolutely sure. It might have been shadow of a tree or a bush. Sure, if there was someone, that could account for the phone, couldn't it? I wonder. But who'd want to do that? What reason could they have? Well, I can think of one or two, and they're not here in this cottage. What do you mean? Oh, just that I'd rather be at the farm right now. Jolly's over there. He's on his own. Then I think we should go there with you. Don't you agree, Gillian? I suppose so. Well, I mean, if there's likely to be any trouble... Better we're all together. Yes, yeah, fair enough, Monty. Right, let's make track, shall we, and uh, keep our eyes open on the way. How close in do you want to go, sir? Oh, not too near. I mustn't scare him off, Sergeant. No, sir. You spoke to Inspector Bishop? Yes, he's keeping a check on transport in and out of the area. He'll be ready to go when you give the word. Aye, but that's the problem, isn't it? When to give the word? We may have to take a chance on it, sir. Oh, we may have that. It would help if we knew what was happening at Selby Farm. Yes, Sergeant. You know, I'd give anything to be a fly on the wall of that farmhouse just at this moment. And you're absolutely sure, Jolly, you haven't heard anything, seen anyone around the farm? No, sir. 
As I said, everything's been very quiet, just as it was when you left. Oh, thank goodness for that. So this is what all the trouble's been about. That's right, Gillian. But I don't understand, Richard. How did it get there? I mean, it looks terribly heavy. I don't know. You try to open the safe. Uh, you weren't tempted, Jolly? Oh, no, sir. Who's that? Well, we won't know until we answer it, will we? <laughs> now, what are you doing with a gun, Monty? Well, you'll never know. Well, put it away, for goodness sake. Well, hello. I think you'd better come in. Alan, what are you doing here? Why shouldn't I be here? Well, I didn't expect to see you, that's all. Why did you go off like that, leaving me at Monty's? I was worried. Well, you were asleep. We didn't want to disturb you. You've had enough to put up with this last day or two. Alan, were you outside the cottage a few minutes ago? No, I came straight here. That's what you said in your note, Monty. Well, I had to let you know where we were. Gillian got this bee in her bonnet about old Smith. What about him? Well, those men who kidnapped you demanded the farmer's ransom. But that's decided, isn't it? You haven't changed your mind. No, but I was worried about Mr Smith, what they might do to him if he refused to leave. But he's gone, hasn't he? Well, thanks to Richard. But you came down here just to persuade Smith to leave. Well, I thought it was important. Well, it comes to something when you're more concerned about him than about your oh, own brother. Oh, that's not true, Alan. Have you forgotten those people who kidnapped me? They're still around, you know. The deal's not over yet. Oh, I'm sorry, Alan. I wish you told me. Hmm. What is it, Richard? Well, I'm just wondering if Alan could have been followed down here. I don't think so. I didn't see anyone. Well, he wouldn't, not if they're any good. No. Well, I'm sure I wasn't followed. I hope not. Anyway, what are you doing here? They're looking for buried treasure. Over here, Alan. Look at this. Good God. Now we know why these people were so anxious to get hold of the farm. It was more valuable than we thought. So that's why I was kidnapped. Yes, and why three people have been killed. And there's your friend, Brandt. Don't forget him, no, he's not my friend, Monty. But you trusted him, didn't you? You've met him, have you? Uh, yes. Why do you ask? Well, when I was kidnapped, they held me in a small room, but I could hear them talking. His name kept cropping up. In fact, he was there part of the time. I certainly heard an American voice. Ah, you see, Richard? I told you to be careful about him. I know you did, Monty. Richard... You don't think Smith could have done this? It's possible he knew about it, but he couldn't have handled it by himself. Richard, here a minute. Yes, what is it? See those bushes across the lane by the paddock? Hmm? Where? There, there. Can't you see something moving? There, there it is, yes. again, you see? Yes. There's someone over there, don't you think? Yes, it's probably worth checking. Right, I'll come with no, you. No, 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 I'll take Jolly. Why? Well, it's difficult ground, be hard going, can't risk your leg. Oh, damn the leg. No, look, you stay here and look after Gillian. Oh, and better keep Alan out of sight. Uh, Jolly! Yes, sir? Mr. Vaughan thinks he's seen someone over behind those bushes. We're going to have a look. Very well, sir. We'll go out the back way. Now, um, you walk towards the lane, uh, as if you're going to the car, and, and take your time. If there's someone there, they'll move to their left to avoid being seen. I'll make for those trees over on the right. With a bit of luck, I'll be ready for them. But give me a minute or two to get there. Yes, sir. Where are you going, Richard? It won't be long, Gillian. Now, Monty, you come and lock the door after us, will you? Come on, man, where are you? We haven't got all day. Ah. Ah, got you. What? No, you don't. Let me go. Not this time, Mr. Brandt. Now, keep quite still, will you? Hey, you're breaking my arm. Very possibly. Okay, Jolly, I've got him. Coming, sir. For God's sake, Rollison. Uh, take the hiding in the bushes now, have you, Mr. Brandt? Mind your own damn business. Mr. Brandt. You're making a mistake, Rollison. You've got the wrong man. Sorry about that, sir. Oh, I wonder what was happening, Jolly. He moved back deeper into the bushes, oh, sir. Never mind, we've got him. Oh, and uh, oh, we've made a mistake, Jolly. That's right, Rollison. Ah, oh, no. No mistake. Not after what we've learned about you. We received a report from the United States, Mr. Brandt. Yes, but that's not me. Oh, no, of course not. Look, you're not going to believe this, but Brandt's not my real name. You'll have to do better than that. Okay, Rollison. I might as well come clean with you. My name's Forbes. Eddie Forbes. I work for the FBI. I'm on a job over here. Brandt's the guy I'm investigating. Identification? I don't have any on me. I thought not. Oh, this Brandt guy, he's, he's real big time. But he doesn't show himself much, even in the States. And no one knows him over here. I was hoping I might get a break if I used his name. Oh, it's a good story, eh, Jolly? Yes, sir. And it happens to be true. But um, what are you doing here at Selby Farm? Well, this case I'm working on, it's tied up with this place. Well, as it happens, I think we may be able to check your story, or part of it. What do you mean? There's someone at the farm who may recognize you, or at least your voice. Look, Rollison, I don't think I ought to let Come you... Come on, Brant, you've no choice at the moment. Uh, let's go, shall we? Well, sir, what do you think? No news from the checkpoints. 
Not a sausage. God, it's difficult. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, Sergeant. We'll leave it another 30 minutes. Then we're going in. Right, sir. I'll get on to Inspector Bishop and uh, let him know. There's no answer. I don't understand, sir. Well, neither do I. Ah, I told him to lock it. All right, Mr. Brandt, inside. Yes, sir. Monty, Gillian, we're back. Where are they, sir? I don't know. Hello there, Monty, Alan. Uh, sir, the safe, it's been opened. Oh, my God. What do you know about this, Wallace? About what, Mr. Brown? This safe. You've got to tell me. What's your interest in this? For God's sake, Rollison, it's important. You know what was inside? Yes, I do. You've got to tell me all you know. Well, it was locked when we left this room 20 minutes ago. Who was in here? Gillian, Monty Morn, and Alan Selby. Nobody else? No. God, I'd never have guessed they were in on it. You know what? Look, you're not making sense, Mr. Brown. The safe's open. The contents are missing. Who else could have done it? I don't believe it. And they've got away. They might be anywhere by now. Well, there's no point in us rushing around in all directions. It'd be a waste of time. Perhaps you'd like to tell me what you know, and we may get some ideas. I'm sorry, Monty, but I still can't understand why we had to leave the farm the way we did. But we've told you, Gillian, we couldn't let Richard know. Well, I don't see why not. But he'd have tried to stop us. Look, you've been worried sick about Alan, haven't you? What might happen? Well, you know I have. Well, surely his safety is more important than anything else. Oh, of course. Look, Gillian, will you trust me? No more problems when I've handed this over, I promise. Well... Is that why we've come to the Wee Chief? Yes, now, come on. The sooner we get this package off our hands, the sooner we'll be free of this whole business. Well, I'm not an expert, but it sounds like a fairly lethal weapon. It is. When the damping device is withdrawn from the Eon Drive, well, it's a sort of vast time bomb. I hate to think what its effect would be. But it is safe now. Well, assuming the whole unit is still in the cylinder, yes. But I won't be happy till it's back in that safe. And you say it was stolen six months ago. Right. Is this Brandt fellow, or the other Brandt, is, is he a spy? No. Well, why did he steal it? Rawlinson, can you imagine what a device like that is worth to a really big-time criminal? It hardly bears thinking about, eh, Jolly? No, sir. But how did you know it was hidden at Selby Farm? Well, that was a stroke of luck, Jolly. You see, we suspected Brandt was behind the job, but he wasn't over here when it was pulled. Well, there was an English end to the operation. That's right. Anyway, everybody was lying low, obviously hoping the fuss would die down. But a couple of weeks ago, Brandt suddenly appeared on the scene again, from nowhere. Now, it's my theory he'd heard from England that the farm was up for sale. I think they decided to change plans, buy the farm and remove the safe. But why buy the place if they knew where it was hidden? They've already killed three people. Why stop at Smith? And bring the police to the farm? Uh, that's the last thing they'd want. Yeah, but Smith was involved. He knew it was there. I think he was well paid to keep his mouth shut and keep visitors out. Hmm, that answers one question, but I've got another. Be my guest. How did you know I was down here? Oh, that's easy. I followed you. You what? Oh, I had a theory. You're the sort of guy who makes things happen. And you do, right? Oh, please go on. I phoned Superintendent Grice this morning to tell him you were on the move. Bill Grice knows about all this? Yes. And the real Brandt? We know he's over here. Well, why didn't Bill tell me? Well, you see, we weren't making a lot of progress, and we had to keep a low profile. So when you were brought into this by that Morn guy, well, it made sense to let it take its course. See what happened. You mean Grice has been using me as a decoy? Well, let's say a catalyst. I'd never have believed it of him. Indeed not, sir. He thinks very highly of you, Rollison. There's a funny way of showing it. Hey, we got visitors. No, sir. I believe I recognise the sound of Mr. Ebbett's van. Well, she's been gone a long time, Johnny. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Ebbett. I've been busy. Uh, oh, uh, sorry. This is Mr. Brandt. Uh, uh, no, Mr. Forbes. Uh, Bert Ebbett. Uh, pleased to meet you, sir. Glad to know you, Bert. And I see I've convinced you, Rollison. Yes. It's going to be difficult to think of you as a Forbes and not a Brandt. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Ebbett. <laughs> I've got some news. I think you ought to know that... Uh, yes, Bert? Well, I've just come down from the village. There's a big American car parked outside of Wheat Chief. I thought you might be interested. Oh, we are. And another thing. Uh, well, you know I'm a bit nosy. There's an helicopter standing around doing nothing in a field the other side of the village. Well, that is interesting. Looks like the real Brant's in town. Let's go. Yeah, come on. Uh, we'll use your van, Bert. Let's hope we can get there in time. So you finally got here, Selby. Sorry I'm late. Who are these people? I said just you and me. I had to bring them. I couldn't leave them at the farm. Well, you'd better come in. Thank Thanks. you. What kept you? I was beginning to worry. Just one or two little problems. Like what? Oh, nothing serious. You sure? Yes. Fine. Well, I see you've brought our precious little package. This is it. Hand it over, then. 
That's it. Oh, baby, I've gone to a lot of trouble to get my hands on you. But you're worth it. Oh, boy, are you worth it. This is just as it was in the safe. This is beautiful. You've done a good job, Selby. Thanks. Well, now, I've got a minute or two before I leave. Aren't you going to introduce me? Uh, yes. Uh, this is Gillian, my sister. Glad to know you, honey. Hello. And Mr. Monty Morton. Hi. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. Uh, this is Mr... Uh... No need to be shy, Selby. My name's Brand. What? That's right, honey. William T. Brand. But you can't be. I've met Mr. Brandt. I know him. I don't aim to show you my passport. Gillian, please. But, Monty, this isn't Red Brandt, not the one who came to the farm. What? Uh, look, Alan, you've done what you came here to do. I think we should go. I can't, not just yet. Monty, please, hmm? I'd like to go. Now. Yes, all right, Gillian. Come on. Hold it, mister. You're not leaving this room. At least not yet a while. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid you can't stop us. <gasps> this gun says you don't even get to that door. Oh, come on. You'll use it, Monty, please. That's good advice, Mr. Morin. Now come over here and sit down. Oh, very well. But you wait until and I keep get Keep my... your mouth shut. Now, Selby, before I go, those little problems. They're not important. I'll decide that. Well, it was Rollison. This is the guy you call the Toff? Yes. He was down at the farm with his manservant. I, I didn't expect that. But he doesn't know what this is about. Anybody else? No. And he doesn't know you're here. You'll be away before he can do anything. Selby, if he's figured this right, he could be in the village already. Not yet. I fixed his car. Okay, so he's phoned the police. Not from the farm. And I cut the phone wires at the cottage. Still, I'd better not hang around too long. No, but everything's fixed. The helicopter? Yep. I just don't believe this, Alan. What are you doing? You're actually working with this man. I have to, Gillian. You don't understand. But you're no better than him. You're a crook. All that kidnapping stuff. But I'm... why, Alan? Oh, you never understand me, Gillian. Not properly. You see, I needed money badly. I got involved in this and, well, I suppose it wasn't as simple as I thought it would be. But why didn't you tell me? I hope this would be the finish of it when I delivered this package. And we've been going mad trying to help you. You've had no thought for Gillian. She's been desperate. She thought you were in real trouble. He will be if I don't get away soon. And you're not going anywhere, I promise you. This gun says I will. The moment you leave here, I ring the police. Don't you care what happens to your girlfriend? What do you mean? Well, I got myself some extra insurance, haven't I? A pretty little hostage. <sighs> Selby did me a good turn when he brought his sister. No. You wouldn't do that, Mr. Brandt. And who says different? I don't no, want to. No. <laughs> Stupid, Miss Selby. You've killed him. Stupid. He shouldn't have gotten away. Oh, oh Monty. <coughs> He's killed Alan. Come on, Miss Selby. I haven't got time to hang around here. Oh. Oh. What is it, Monty? I, I can't move. It's my leg. It's all right. I'll stay here with you. You're coming with me, lady. Uh, now move. No. You want me to finish off your boyfriend? Oh, no, please. Come on, then. Gillian, Gillian. Coat pocket. There's a gun. Take it. Monty. Quick, hide it. What are you two talking about? They'll catch you, Brandt. You won't... You won't get, get away. Oh, Monty. Don't worry, lady. He's just passed out. By the time he wakes up, we'll be well away. Now pick up that cylinder and let's get moving. And remember, when we go downstairs and across to the car, act like normal. No tricks, lady. You remember that. I hope we've got you in time, Mr. R. Yeah, fingers crossed, Bert, eh? It... Stop a minute. All right. You're coming out of the wheat sheaf. Do you see? Gillian, and there's a man with her. Yes, that's Brandt. Miss Selby's carrying something. Is that the missing cylinder? That's it, Jolly. Uh, Bert, where's that helicopter? In a field, a couple of miles down this lane, Mr. R. You've got to get to the car. He's got to turn round. Yes, I've got an idea. What's that, Rollison? I'll tell you on the way. Let's get moving, Bert. We haven't got much time. That's right, honey. You keep a tight hold on that cylinder. You drop that and we go up and take half the county with us. Don't have much to say, do you? Look, honey, you got nothing to worry about. Right, so your brother got shot. He was stupid. Should have kept out of the way. See, I don't kill people unless they get in my way. Like Lodwood and Habden, they had it coming. And the girl, well, she knew too much. But I can be real nice to people I like. And I like you, honey. No, I mean it. If you're nice to me, I... 
What the hell? This I can do without. Hey, you! Move those cows out of here. Sorry, sir, I won't keep you long. Now, now, come on, get out of the gentleman's way. Come on, now. Oh, the stupid fool. Hey, you're driving him in closer. Sorry, sir. Come on, go. Come on, now. Get away, Dan. I can't move. What's this joke? Okay, right now. What the... Jillian, give it to me. What? Thanks. Now, come on, Jillian. What's the... No, honey. No, you what, Jillian? No! Oh, uh, Jillian. Oh, my God. You shot Alan. Yes. Oh, okay, Jillian, okay. I had to do it. Yes. He murdered Alan. Take care of her, Red. She needs you. No worry, Rollison. I'll look after her. Well, Bill, trust you to turn up late, as usual. Oh, looks as though you handled it well enough without me. Just about. A nasty business, though. Yes. How's Miss Selby? Oh, I think she'll be all right. Be gentle with her, Bill. Hey, you know I will. Yes, of course. But what do you think, a suspended sentence? Well, I can't see it as anything else, can you? I suppose not, in the circumstances. <laughs> What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again. Da, 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 da. With a cloud up above. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Rollison. Sir. Uh, 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 pa- pass with the rope, there's a good fellow. There you are, sir. Thanks. Sorry, Jolly, what is it? That was Miss Selby on the telephone. She asked if you would care to spend the weekend of the 24th at Selby Farm. I don't know. Have you checked the diary? You're free that weekend, sir. And I gather Mr. Morn is also invited. Really? You know, he's taken the news very well, hasn't he? Indeed he has, sir. I don't know. These Americans don't waste any time, do they? No, sir. (laughs) Now, wait a minute. The the wedding's on the 10th. Won't they be away on the 24th? Apparently she and Mr. Brandt... uh, (laughs) Mr. Forbes... (laughs) Yes, it's still hard to think of him as Mr. Forbes, isn't it? It is, sir. But they are delaying their honeymoon for a while. Uh, Really? Yes, sir. And it seems that Miss Selby has been beset by another little problem. Good Lord, what is it this time? She's in urgent need of a celebrity to open the village fate, sir. Well, offhand, I can't think of anyone. Can you, Dolly? Yes, sir. You, sir. (laughs) On one condition, Jolly. You come with me. I should be delighted, sir. Life on the farm can be quite delightful. As long as it's not indulged in too frequently, eh? Exactly, sir. That was the last episode of The Toff on the Farm, dramatised by Roy Lomax from the novel by John Creasy, starring Terence Alexander as The Toff with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Gillian Selby was played by Heather Stoney, Monty Morn by Terence Hardiman, Alan Selby by Alaric Cotter, Eddie Forbes, alias Red Brandt, by Ed Bishop, the real William T. Brandt by Alan White, Superintendent Grice by Duncan Lamont, and Bert Ebert and the Police Sergeant by Douglas Blackwell. The producer was John Fawcett Wilson.